Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Brittany and I dig into the tools and tech made for photographers and creative business owners. Because running a small business is hard enough and the tools that you use should not make it harder. I trial run systems, break them down from a user's perspective and report back so that you can make informed choices with confidence. If that sounds helpful, I hope you'll subscribe. It's been just over a year since I've looked at and compared filter pixels AI culling tool against two other systems. And the results of that test did not really go in filter pixels favor. The UI and settings were a bit light for my taste and they left a lot to be desired. But now they've rolled out a major update that at least on paper seems like a massive upgrade. This new version of their interface, which they call V4, so that's what I'll be calling it as well, is an all-in-one tool with AI culling and editing. We'll mainly be focusing on the culling since a lot of the updates center around that, but because this is a complete workflow solution, I will briefly look at the editing as well. There's going to be a good amount to look at, so I will have some organized chapters listed in the description if you wanna hop around. By the end of this video, we should be able to see if this update has made filter pixel a real competitor in the space for this looksy at filter pixel v4 i am going to be throwing a wedding at it with 1741 images i'll be showcasing the different elements of the updated system and just chatting through what i like and what i think can be improved this is all my experience with v4 if you try it out, you may have a different way of making certain features and settings work, and that is totally fine. If there's something you are curious about that I don't cover, I encourage you to use the free trial that FilterPixel offers. Previously, I felt like the UI was kind of bare bones. It was really compact, not a ton to look at, but they made sure their users knew how to operate the system through helpful guides and video walkthroughs. Now in V4, the support offerings have only grown. There's a walkthrough of the system as soon as we log in, and there's still a video tutorial and support pages at the ready. The home UI has also seen a huge overhaul and I really like the layout and organization. It's not busy, but it's also not empty. There's a comfortable amount of space within the system with the right amount of information. From this home interface, we can see our files, view AI profiles, and set our preferences for culling. I've never seen tags given as an option for rating images. And because I was curious, I did try it out and found that it's not my preferred rating method, but I do still love that it's there. And I think it's a great inclusive addition to the system. We can also now customize our key bindings. Last time I looked at their system, that was not a thing. And it was a bit of an inconvenience since the selecting and deselecting designated keys were on opposite sides of the keyboard. But now we are in full control of our selecting destiny. Now for the culling. One of the new tools in V4 is the magic number tool. This is not something I've seen in any other system I've checked out. And the second I read the description of it, I immediately thought how wonderful it would be for those overshooting moments where I just need an easy way to cut down my photos to a more manageable amount. While the example in the filter pixel walkthrough article about the tool shows it being used for for storytelling opportunities like blogging, which in my case for a wedding would be only needing 70 to 100 images, the tool itself defaults the magic number to a thousand for me and this set of images. And since that's about the number I was hoping to trim this wedding to, I stuck with it. Unfortunately, that's not what I ended up with. It only selected 275 images, and from the article, it says the value put in is the amount the AI will try to come close to. 275 is pretty far from a thousand, so it didn't really stick to that. If I were looking for a set of images for a highlight album for this wedding, 275 could work. Some of the photos selected wouldn't, but that's just the nature of AI picking. It needs oversight. I did wanna make sure that the default number wasn't messing with anything. So I also tried a value of 800 and got the same 275 count. 
Then I tried following what the article had done and inputted a value of 100. And it did do much better getting within a proper range and selected 98 images. The image selected, again, would need to be looked over, but they did tell a story of the full day. I think the best use of the magic number tool at the moment is for getting a set of images for a blog post or highlights gallery. Eventually, it would be cool if it could work for any amount of images, like big events or weddings. But right now, the smaller numbers seem to be what it's built best for. Because the amount of images selected from the magic number tool wasn't what I was looking for, I went on a little side quest and restarted the call using the advanced options in the culling configuration menu. I was curious to see if it would make any difference in the selections, and it did. It ended up picking over 900 images, and I felt good with the images it ended up choosing. I definitely have to make adjustments, but that is to be expected. However, when I was looking through the images and the tags of the recall, I noticed something interesting. When I had selected the all option so that every image was displayed in the grid, I could see a lot more images with the best tag. But when I clicked into the actual best folder that Filter Pixel had created, it still only showed the original 275 from the initial magic number call. Just to make sure I wasn't imagining things, I exported that folder and only 275 images were exported. So it seems like the folder itself didn't update to reflect the new results, even though the tags did. My guess, and it's not a very good one, is that there might be a caching issue or something that the filter pixel team will be patching. It's something to watch out for. Also, the way tech can humble us is incredible. Watching nearly every image land in the review folder while the call was running and seeing no images in the best folder gave me a very confused but good laugh. The system does update with the final numbers once the full call is complete, but during the 25-ish minutes it took to process, I just sat there staring at the zero next to the best folder and quietly questioning my choices. <laughs> With the images called, the review interface is, to put it simply, my favorite. I love the design decisions they made for V4. It is minimal, but it still feels super comfortable. I'm not missing anything. I'm not wishing for anything. The sidebar houses our culling data, the system's picks, key face views, and another new addition, the advanced filters. It's pretty neat and can be used to easily sort through images with different filter types, like closed eyes, in focus, and then some more obscure ones like images that feature dancing, hugging, makeup, etc. Of course, there are going to be a few misses because this is just pattern recognition. AI does doesn't know what dancing is, it doesn't feel the energy or context the way we do. It's working off examples it was trained on and learning what dancing usually looks like in terms of poses, body positions, or movement cues. So if someone's helping another person into their dress or suit and there's a sense of motion or a certain posture, the system might go, yeah, that looks close enough, and tag it as dancing. It's not perfect, but it gets surprised surprisingly close most of the time. And it can also kind of be unintentionally funny, like when it labels a bird figure as dog. I think it's the all caps of that tag that really gave me just the best kind of giggle. Our last updated element for culling are the view modes, specifically for scenes and surveying. Filter Pixel organizes photos in this scene mode in a way that makes it very easy and fast to scroll through. If there's a duplicate for a scene, it's marked with a blue icon that we can click to open up survey mode. And I find the survey mode to be absolutely stellar. Whenever we zoom in on the subject, it zooms all the duplicates in at the same time. There's no individual clicking and dragging. Whatever you do to one image will be done to the others in the scene. The relief that this will bring for checking group photos is just totally next level. For the full circle effect of this all-in-one system, I do want to touch on the editing, which starts with creating an AI profile. Unfortunately, it looks like AI profile creation is only available if you have Lightroom catalogs, which is a bummer for those that don't use Lightroom, and I 
hope system compatibility can be improved in the future. The initial upload phase was smooth and easy, and I actually thought this was the training portion. It goes through a few different steps and says that it's creating the AI profile, so I think I just assumed that once it was finished, I would have a usable profile, but it only took 44 minutes, and I've never seen a system take that little time to train a whole AI profile, so my spidey senses probably need some calibrating. Instead, once it's at 100%, we then have to manually request training. My hope is that eventually the creating will just become the training and there won't be a need for request buttons. But for right now, this is what we got. Because I wasn't sure when I would be getting my profile back, and since I was really excited to see the editing process, I decided to use one of the profiles that comes standard in Filter Pixel. To access editing, we'll just click on the edit button within our project, and from there, make all the necessary decisions from the sidebar. I'm going with the Timeless profile from Vanessa Norris, and I'm also adding on some system adjustments like crop, straighten, and tone curve, because why not? Also, just as an aside, I wish the toggles when switched on would change colors. Tiny gripe, but this is an important signal for an interface to have. Editing with the system took 33 minutes, and while this box at the top says all 1,741 images have been edited, I did confirm that no, only the five-star photos had edits applied. And for those extra adjustments, the cropping and straightening being done by the system did a good job. There weren't any overly done crops or straightens, just all very normal and natural. <laughs> The tone curve didn't really make much of a difference for me with editing. It was extremely minimal in adjustments. It might be profile dependent, so when I do get my profile back, I will follow up. Overall, I do think V4 is a big improvement for Filter Pixel. I think they took their old system that had kind of fallen behind with design and innovation and injected it with a freshness that will make their competition do a double take. Are there spots that I think need polish and continued attention? Absolutely. But it's early days for V4, so there's going to be a lot of improvements and updates for it that I think will take care of some of the oddities that I stumbled into. It's pretty exciting to think about how a year ago I wasn't super keen on Filter Pixel system, and now I'm having moments in V4 where I'm thinking, why isn't everyone doing this? I find that to be awesome, and I am very excited to see where they take things next. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have tried out Filter Pixel V4, please let me know about your experience with the system. I love hearing how other people use these systems because the way each of us move through them can totally change how we individually feel about them in the end. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that little bell so that you can be alerted whenever I release a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.